This is part 113 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement email confirmation in ASP.NET Core. The generated email confirmation link is something like the following. Notice we have the full absolute URL here, including the request scheme, that is HTTP or HTTPS. And it is this confirm email action within our account controller that will actually confirm the user email. And then to this action, we pass two parameters, the user ID for whom we want to confirm the email and the email confirmation token itself. These are passed in the URL as query string parameters and then the ASP.NET Core model binding automatically maps these query string parameter values to the action parameters on confirm email. In ASP.NET Core, generating email confirmation token is straightforward. All we need to do is call generate email confirmation token async method of the built-in ASP.NET Core user manager service passing this method the user object for whom we want to generate the email confirmation token. Once we have the token generated, we have to build the confirmation link itself that look like this. And for that, we use URL dot action helper and to this we pass the name of the action method which is confirm email and the name of the controller which is account and then we want to pass user id and the token itself in the url as query string parameters so for that we are using an anonymous object here and then finally this last parameter request dot scheme is required if we want to generate an absolute url that look like this if we omit this parameter it only generates a relative url but if we want something that a user can click on we want the full absolute url including the request scheme that is HTTP or HTTPS and for that to happen make sure you include this last parameter request dot scheme. So let's look at all this in action now. At the moment we are in HTTP post register action of our account controller. It is this action that registers a new user with our application. Notice here we are creating an instance of application user and then we are passing this user object to the create async method of the user manager service. It is this method that creates a new row for this user in ASP.NET users table. Upon successful registration of the user, we do not want to allow him to log in. We want to first have his email confirmed. And remember in ASP.NET Core, to generate email confirmation token, all we need to do is call this method, generate email confirmation token async of the user manager service, passing it the user object for whom we want to generate the email confirmation token. And we already have the user object and the user manager service is also injected into the account controller. So all we need to do is upon successful registration of the user, we want to generate the email confirmation token. Once we have the token generated, we need to build the confirmation link that look like this. This is the link that the user clicks on to confirm his email. And to build this link, we are going to use URL.ActionHelper. And to this, we pass the name of the action, the controller, and the two query string parameters, and the request scheme, that is HTTP or HTTPS. Once we have the confirmation link generated, we want to email this to the user so he can log into his email service provider and then click on this link to confirm his email. We'll discuss sending emails in our upcoming videos. What we will do instead in this video is log this confirmation link to a file. And for that, we need to inject the ASP.NET Core built-in iLogger service. As the generic argument, let's pass the name of the controller and then let's call the parameter logger. We need to bring in the required namespace and then let's press control period to generate the required private field. Next, let's use this logger instance and log the confirmation link. We discussed logging in detail in parts 61 to 64. 
if an administrator is already signed in and if it is the administrator that is registering a new user we want to redirect that administrator to the list users action of the administration controller on the other hand an end user can also register with our application as an anonymous user and if it is the end user that is registering himself then we do not want to allow him to sign in because he needs to confirm his email before he can sign in. so let's delete this code set the error title on the view back to registration successful and error message 2 before you can log in please confirm your email by clicking on the confirmation link we have emailed you and then send the user to error view which will display the error title and error message with all these changes let's run our project we are on the user registration form let's register a new user with this email prajim1 at prajimtech.com Notice we have a runtime exception, no I use a two-factor token provider of the user named default is registered and this is being thrown from our account controller where we are calling generate email confirmation token async. So basically this is complaining that it cannot find any token provider that can actually generate a token. To fix this, we need to provide a token provider. We can either use the built-in ASP.NET Core default token providers or we can provide our own custom token provider implementations. To use the ASP.NET Core default token providers, all we need to do is call this add default token providers method. We do this in configure services method of our startup class. Notice on the services object, we are calling add identity method to add identity services. And then to this, let's chain add default token providers method and then run our project. Register a new user, this time with the email prajim2 at prajimtech.com. There we go we see registration successful message. To display this message at the moment, I am reusing the error view. If it sounds a bit hacky to you, there's nothing stopping you from creating a separate registration success view and then moving this title and message to the view instead of having it in the code here. In the interest of time, I just chose to reuse the error view. At the moment, I'm not logged in as an administrator. We just registered a new user without logging in. Registration is successful and for us to be able to log in, we have to first confirm our email by clicking on the email confirmation link. Our application registered users are stored in ASP.NET users table. So if we take a look at this table, notice a new user with email prajim2 at prajimtech.com is registered and the email confirmed column value is false, meaning the email is not confirmed yet. At the moment, we are logging the confirmation link to a file using nlog. We discussed logging to a file in detail in part 63 of this video series. So if we take a look at nlog.config file, on my machine, the log file is present in this folder, C demo logs. And if we take a look at the log file, we have the confirmation link right here. Notice it is pointing to the confirm email action within the account controller. And in the URL, we are passing the user ID and the email confirmation token as query string parameters. Let's copy this confirmation link, paste it in the browser and then press the enter key. We have a 404 error. That's because within the account controller, we do not have confirm email action. Let's implement it now. The name of the action is confirm email and it takes two parameters. The values for these two parameters come from the URL. Model binding in ASP.NET Core is going to automatically map the values from these two query string parameters to the respective parameters on this controller action. If the incoming user ID or the email confirmation token is null, we cannot continue confirming the email. So we simply redirect the user to the index action of home controller. If the user ID is not null, we want to find the user. So let's create a variable for that. And to find the user, let's use user manager service find by ID async method. And to this, let's pass the user ID. This is an async method. So let's use the await keyword. 
if this user variable is null, it means this incoming user ID is invalid. So let's send the user to not found view and then display this message, the user ID, whatever is the incoming user ID is invalid. If we have found the user, then we want to confirm the user email. For that, let's use the user manager service confirm email async method. To this, we pass two parameters, the user object whose email we want to confirm and the email confirmation token itself. This is also an async method. So let's use the await keyword and store the result that we get back in a variable called result. Upon successful confirmation, this method confirm email async flips this flag email confirmed from false to true. So if result dot succeeded, return view. We don't have a view with this name confirm email. So let's add it to the account folder because the name of our controller is account controller. This view displays the message. Thank you for confirming your email. On the other hand, if we are not able to successfully confirm the user email on the view back, set error title to email cannot be confirmed and send the user to error view. With all these changes, let's build our solution. Build succeeded, so let's reload this web page. There we go. Our email address is successfully confirmed. If we now take a look at ASP.NET users table, notice the email confirmed column here, the value is now true. So we should be able to log in using this email, presume2 at presumetech.com. Let's copy it and log in with that email. There we go we are successfully logged in. Now let's try to log in with these other email addresses. We should not be allowed to log in because none of these other email addresses are confirmed yet. So let's try to log in with this email address prajim at prajimtech.com and see what happens. There we go. As expected, we see the validation message email not confirmed yet. At the moment, we are logging the email confirmation link to a file. We'll discuss how to send it in an email in our upcoming videos. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.